Okay, in this video, we're going to look at how to use the Studio Emulate 5000. We're going to be using two programs for this. One of them is Studio 5000 Logics Emulate, and the other is our Studio 5000 software. Basically, what we're going to be doing, as it says, is emulating a PLC, like a physical PLC, but it's going to be software based. So, first thing we want to do is open up Studio 5000 Logics Emulate, and whenever this opens up, you will see that we have a basically a uh, software rack here, an, an emulated rack. Now you can expand this, you have up to 17 slots, but we're not going to use all 17, so we're going to hide those. Uh, just show the 9 up here, and then it automatically brings in our communication adapter, and then slot 0 is our RS Links software which is kind of strange you normally don't have that but basically this takes a place of our network card we don't even have to worry about those okay we just know that those are automatically in zero and one what we can add to this we can add two things to this software we can add our simulated cpu card which simulates a 70 series cpu card controller and we can add in our io card which actually has inputs and outputs and I will explain a couple of different things you can do with this. So let's begin. Let's add our CPU card into slot two. So if we right click slot two, we're going to create. We have two options that I just mentioned. We have our 5570 controller, and then we also have our 32 point IO simulator. Okay, so we're going to add our controller into slot two. We're going to hit OK here, and we're just going to hit next and our controller name. Again, whenever we upload the software that we create into this, uh, we'll see that change there. And we're just gonna hit finish. So now we have our emulator in slot two here. Okay, you can see how this looks like the normal CPU card. Let's add our IO card in slot three. So we're gonna right click, create. We're gonna add our IO simulator here. We hit okay slot three and then I've already named this because it used my previous configuration I just called this simulated IO the only thing this is is this has a marquee that scrolls across the front of this IO card that's all this does okay. when I hit finish there you go you see that scrolling simulated IO on that slot there okay so now we want to open up Studio 5000, but we want to keep this open. So I'm going to move this to the bottom. And then we're going to open up Studio 5000 like normal. And we're going to create a new project. Okay. And then I will call this project Simulation. And then last time I opened this up in our lab here in our classroom, we have uh, 81s so you can see all that selected but what I want to do is close that and I want to go to the very bottom here and select studio 5000 emulate controller okay because we're that's what we're using here and again that's our only choice is the 5570 and then I'm going to hit next I'm just going to use a, the 10 slot chassis one thing that I forgot to mention let me go back here a second and I apologize for this. Whenever you go to add this, you need to be sure that you're using the version that you have in your software. Okay, I am. I've already had this set up because I was using the previous specifications, but we have 32 in our lab, uh, the newest version, and so you need to be sure that you match that. And I apologize if you did not do that. Just remove your CPU card and add it back in with the right revision. Okay, but again, I'm good. So the only thing I have to change is we're in slot two for our CPU card. So I'll go to slot two here. Okay, and I'm going to hit finish. And then you're going to see this is going to open up a program just like we'd have on a normal PLC with the emulator CPU card in slot two. Okay, and there we go. Our software is loaded. You see here in slot two, we have our virtual backplane, and in slot two, we have our CPU card. The one thing I'm going to do is I am going to set this up where I can still see my IO emulator. 
down here at the bottom, we have to manually enter this IO card in. And you can see whenever you push that, that it opens up the inputs and outputs and basically simulates the lights that come on on the IO cards on your regular PLC. Okay, so I'm going to right click backplane and we're going to select a new module because we're going to add our IO card in. And when you first open this up, it's it's going to choose everything, right? And so what we want to do is we want to show our filters, okay? And we want to deselect this first one, which will deselect everything. All right, so nothing's selected now because it's going to be really hard to find this IO card. What we want to do is go to the bottom here, and we're going to select other. Whenever we select other, only one module comes up. That's our module, generic 1756 module. Okay, we're going to hit create. Now we're going to name this. I'll just name this simulate underscore IO. Okay, now this is again our slot, we're in slot three. So what we're going to do is on our input um, assembly instance, our inputs are going to be one, and we're going to select size two here. I was doing size, this is basically an array. I might show you that a little later on, but for this video, uh, one didn't work. Even though I didn't want to create two arrays, uh, for some reason I had to do two. And again, on that plcguru.net video, this is what he showed and um, it worked. So output two, size one, and then our configuration 16. So you want to be sure and write this down whenever you create your emulate it. IO cards. Okay, input one, size two, output two, size one, configuration 16, zero. We want to hit OK now. Okay, now this is the other thing is that Alan Bradley does not suggest keeping this at five milliseconds, even though that's kind of what comes up standard. You want to change this to 50 milliseconds on your connection. Okay, so we're going to hit OK here. Now, if we open up our control tags, we see that we've got our IO card here. And this is sharing inputs and outputs. So if we expand this, and remember that we selected two for our size, we've got two points here. This is a little quirky. So my students know I say that a lot about some Allen Bradley stuff. But the inputs that we're going to be using is the second inputs array one here. Okay. I'm not sure why. If you know, please comment in the comments below, but that's the way it's set up and that's the way it worked. When I tried to do a uh, size of one, it did not work for my inputs um, on this card. Outputs work, but inputs don't. So my outputs, I've got a size of one and that's where all my outputs lie. Now, let's test this out real quick. Go back to our emulator down here. We're going to right click this emulator and go to properties. Okay, now it brings up this slot three properties that we can change our what's scrolling on a marquee. But what we want to go to is this IO data here because this is what's so handy about this emulator. If we go to IO data, now we have all of our inputs and outputs here. So now what we can do is we can actually go to communications and I'm going to download an empty program to our emulator so we can see the IOs. So just like we normally do, we go to Who Active, but now you see we've got this emulate. So this is our normal RS Links communications that we had set up. Now we go to Emulate here, and we go, we're going to download to slot two or CPU card. Now the reason that this is showing four as being marked out is because originally when I did this to set this up, I had an input card on slot three and output card on slot four. Um, you can't really, basically what I was doing was just using this as an input and this is an output because you can do both on one card. We're just going to, I'm going to show you how to do that for this. Okay. So I'm going to download an empty program. Okay, 
Now we notice up here we are in remote mode. We need to change that to run mode. Now we're in run mode. We're going to go to our IO data and watch. Trim in the right one here. I was in the wrong slot there. There you go. See that turning off and on. Okay. And if we go to our outputs, let's turn an output on here. Let's turn on output zero. See output zero comes on. So let's turn this back off. Output zero is now off. Okay, so this is super handy. But let's go offline a second, or let's just create a simple uh, run start program. So we're going to do it use an atch and a latch and unlatch. Okay, and we're going to create a new tag. We'll call this start. Now it's an alias tag, so we have alias here, and we're going to go down. Remember our input. We're going to have to dig a little deep here. Um, we're going to open that, expand that. We'll expand this, and we should have two options. And remember, we're going to use array one. Oops, double clicked on accident. So we're going to select this down arrow. We'll use input zero on our array one here. Go to create. There you go. Now our start is aliased at this input here. Okay. Do the same thing for stop, but our stop will be aliased at input one. So three one data. Scroll down to the second. Now, if you connect to a um, an IB16, for instance, you're going to have fault and you're going to have data here. That's the only thing that I can think of the reason you have to have the two arrays but you can see just like you would have on a physical PLC this zero is grayed out because I'm using that for my start so I'm going to use one for my stop and hit create okay now let's do an output so we'll just call this run an alias here and it's still on three but now we're going to go to the output so we're going to expand that and we only have one array for our output so we're going to use zero here okay now like I always show you um, all we have to do is pull this tag down to that question mark notice these are not red we have no errors in our program let's download this and watch it work Okay, I want to put that back in remote, yes. We're in run mode. Now watch when I click zero, I start. Notice my output light is on. I turn that off. It's latched in, so it remains on until I hit my stop, which is one, and stops the process. And there you have it. That's how you use the Emulate 5000 software for Studio 5000. Now there's one more thing that you need to do, especially with if you're remoting in or something like that and someone else is going to use this, is um, I'm going to go offline in a second. I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to save this program. But before I close out my emulate, I want to remove the cards that I placed in there because if you don't, they will show up next time. And again, if you're sharing a computer in a lab or something like that, um, you just want to start from scratch here. Okay, and that is how you use Studio 5000 Emulate.